Hello. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's watching. I'm going to wait a few minutes to see if anybody signs on. I'm doing a live video at the, at the time of this. Um, this video is live, so if you come back, hi, so if you come back later and you see this, I may not be live, so I may not be able to answer your questions. So, um, I'm doing a live video right now because yesterday I put out an 1890s wrapper jacket pattern. And I have a, a original 1890s wrapper that I thought you might like to see. Now, this is my first time doing a live where I'm going to show, um, like original garments, so it may be a little bit of a learning curve, so please be patient with me while I try to figure out how to do this with one hand. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to put the phone down at some point to like um, check it out. So I'm waiting just a couple minutes so that we can see if other people join us because I posted that I was going to do a live today. Um, do you guys have any questions for me while we wait? Anything? I hope you're all holding up well. I hope everybody is... Uh, doing good at home or at work or wherever you happen to be. So you're all in my thoughts and prayers. Um, so we're just going to wait a couple more minutes to see if anybody else joins us. My earrings are from Dames a la Mode. Um, represent. <laughs> so she's still open and she's still doing awesome jewelry. All right, so we have a couple people now, so I guess I'll start. So I have an 1890s pattern I put out yesterday that was an 1897 jacket. So I'm going to show you guys the mode illustry that it came from, and I'm going to show you my sample that I made years ago for myself. That's why I made the pattern. And then I'm going to show you an original 1890s wrapper dress that I got in an estate sale a couple months ago. So let me figure out how to turn the phone around and I'll show you the magazine and all that. Okay, so if you have never seen an original mode illustre, this is what they look like. It's kind of torn up. This one is in pretty bad shape. But uh, this is what the original pattern sheets look like out of mode illustre. So these are all overlapping patterns. All of these are patterns that were for the different garments. So with the one that I just put out yesterday, it came off of this sheet. So I had to find all the lines for this particular pattern and draw them all for the, the thing to be made. So in the period, they wouldn't have cut this sheet. They would have like put a piece of paper over the top that you could see through, and that's how they would have drawn it. So this particular one that the pattern from yesterday came from is this is the cover. Really pretty, right? This is October 31st, 1897. Can you guys hear me okay? If you can hear me okay, just give like a thumbs up or something so that I know that you can hear. Anybody? All right. I'm well, just going to keep going. So this is cute. It has like an 1890s. Oh, thank you. Okay. So sounds working. Yay. Okay. Thank you guys. So this is 1897. This is the, the magazine that the pattern from eight, from yesterday came out of. Some really pretty stuff, right? Do you guys like 1890s? Look at this one, isn't that beautiful? So you could tell that they were in the pattern sheet because it would say on the, um, let's see. It would usually tell you which one was on the sheet. I guess this one's a little earlier than most that I do. Here's an ice skating outfit because everybody's got to wear this when they go ice skating. This is an English dress. Not sure why it's an English dress. Uh, I think that says embellished with fur. My French isn't quite so good. So these are some great underwear. This is in the pattern sheet. Let me know if you guys want 1890s undies and I can work on putting this out sometime. And this is the pattern I came out with yesterday. Do we have a visitor? Hi, Penelope. <laughs> this is the pattern I came out with yesterday. Hi, Hi baby. It's an 1890s um, morning jacket. And I think this means it was decorated with lace, which in this, uh, I'm assuming, means this is like a soutache. So <laughs> this is... Uh, the pattern sheet like I said that it came out of. So when I drew this pattern out, 
I had to, hang on, one hand is tricky. This is the pattern for the one that I put out yesterday. So these are the pieces that I had to find on the pattern sheet. So when I looked for the pattern, I had to find the number. And then I look over here and see, see this says like 103. So whatever pattern 103 is, these are the lines that you have to follow for piece 103. That means for each of these individual pieces, I had to draw out the pattern off of this bigger pattern sheet. So when you look at the old, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Jenny says they hurt her brain. Um, I, I enjoy them. They're like really big puzzles, but yeah, they take some getting used to. These guys are stinkers. So you find whichever one, like here's a 94. So you follow it all the way over here and then it keeps going down to the measurements. So this is the cross measurements for whatever the centimeters are that you would have to go out and finish drawing your piece. It's a little bit tricky. The skirts are a real pain in the butt because it gives you the top and then you've got to figure out the rest of it. But these pieces aren't so bad because they're actually all on the sheet. Anyways, um, this one was an e-pattern that I put out, which means that you print it out on uh, eight and a half by 11. I did this to test something for a friend yesterday. So like, this is what it looks like. And then you cut those and you tape it together. So that's what that is because I figured that everybody's at home. So you might as well have something to do at home right now, right? So that's why this one is an e pattern only. So that is the pattern sheet. And I have a ton of these. If you guys really like them, let me know because I can do a ton more. So, sorry, there's my chair. <laughs> so this is my sample. Um, let me, Put the phone down so I can fold this up. Hang on just one second. All right. I didn't want to ruin it. So this is the sample that I made for myself years ago. And I admit that I made it just because I wanted to figure out how the Watteau pleats worked. So I just threw this in the washer and dryer so it's not like the best. And because I was just doing it for myself, then my um, seams aren't finished or anything. But you can see that it's fit on an internal, oh yeah, it's like those Japanese, but that's right, Japanese books do that too. It's fit on an internal lining. So the interesting thing is that the internal lining is also shown outside here at the yoke. So you affix this outer piece to this under piece of the same fabric, and then this acts like a yoke, even though it's not actually a separate yoke. So on this one, I turned the gathers under but in the pattern I suggested you finish that with like a little bias or a piece of trim right here because that would just be a lot easier than doing it this way. The other interesting thing is that it didn't have any sleeves in the pattern so I supplemented sleeves from another mode illustrate issue of the same year but that's the front and it could button it could do all sorts of different stuff on the inside like I've seen them with hooks and eyes it just depends on what you want to do. The patterns Bless Papa! <laughs> Sorry guys, I have a little girl outside. The back, I chose to do these pleats up at the neck like you see in 18th century things. In the original, they had you gather it here. So I guess you could just, however you want to do it, you can gather it or you can pleat it. And then here, you attach, where is it? You attach it to the lining here with the belt, and that's how you get the fullness at the back. So it's all kind of fitted until right here and then it's really full. And the good thing about this is that if you have fluctuating waist size or if you're pregnant or anything, the front has absolutely no shaping at all. So the front is really super adjustable. Like I know that my waist fluctuates a lot more now that I have had a baby. So that's actually super good for me. And you could wear these with corsets or without corsets. So that's fun. So let me switch now and show you the original on my dress form, and then I'll put the phone down after we look at it on the form, and we can look at the guts, because that's the fun part, right? Okay, so here is the original 1890s wrapper. And I found this at the estate sale of the original family. So this was a family garment. They said it was 1860s Civil War, but that's because the lady who owned it her husband fought in the Civil War, so they got it a little bit confused. It was owned by an older lady. So this is really unusual in that 
it has some of the purple. And if you know anything about original garments, purple dyes did not age well at all. So usually like this, they're super, super shattered. And once it goes this way, there's really nothing that you can do about it. The purple dye just didn't work very well. But that top part is silk and the rest of it is all cotton. It's actually like a cotton twill. I don't know if we can see it. There you can see. So it's a cotton twill with a little floral print, which is super pretty and something that you can find a similar fabric of today. So up at the shoulders, just like the one in the pattern, this is accented with rows of, if this one is accented by rows of ribbon. So you could totally use a really narrow ribbon to decorate it, or you could use a soutache, or you could use actual lace. So it's really neat, it's homemade, and you know how people say they didn't have pockets? She's got a pocket that she added, and it has the original hanky inside, which I don't, I mean, I guess the germs are long gone by now. <laughs> but it has a, has a little purple edging on it, which is neat, and a hem stitching. So it's actually little arrows, which is pretty neat. So here's her little hanky that's still in her original pocket. Now I know the part you guys probably all wanna see is the back, and it does have the fake Watteau black, just like the pattern. So there you go. Isn't that a beautiful sleeve? Yeah, it's so puffy. So the back of it does have the Watteau pleats, just like the pattern I put out yesterday which is really neat. You can see that it also is attached at the back waist here, just like in the original pattern that I did. The, the difference is that the pattern starts from up here and this one has the actual yoke. And as you can see, the, the ruffles are faced in the same silk as the yoke. And then it's mounted onto this um, muslin body. And the sleeves are cool because they have a lining, so they really hold their shape. And the way that they're held is by this undersleeve, so they're mounted to this undersleeve, then faced in some sort of a crinoline or tarlatan, and then you've got the fitted sleeve. So with the pattern that I put out, you could totally use a different sleeve. You can substitute. I mean, that's what they did in the period. That's why a lot of these old, old patterns, there weren't really any rules. They're like, okay, just make it up. Here's the basics, have fun. So let me put my phone down and then we'll look at the guts. Does that sound good? Okay, hang on a second. Okay, thanks for being patient with me while I figure out this live thing. So, <laughs> I love you, Taylor. <laughs> you are here with me. <laughs> Driving through a tunnel. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, guys. So, um, here it is flat, and you can tell I seriously just got this because it's got the note inside like a couple months ago. So her name was Sarah Jan Klaus Davis, handmade dress in the 1800s, wife from the Civil War, great grandmother of, I don't know. So Captain H.B. Davis, if you go on my YouTube channel, because I'm on, if you guys don't know I'm on YouTube, we have an interview with my friend Josh, and he talks about H.B. Davis, and he was a um, policeman in Oceanside, California in the 1930s, and he has crazy stories. So this is his great grandmother's dress. Now, just like our pattern, if you open up the guts here, it's got this lining and then the outside is mounted to the lining and that's how it falls away. So unlike our pattern, this one is darted in the front. And if you want to adapt the pattern to have darts in the front, you totally can do that. I like the flexibility of no darts, so I'm going to leave mine loose in the front. See, hang on, I'm gonna take this out. That's annoying. All right, so now we've got this, this seam here, and this is where it's mounted onto the back to have the Watteau pleats. So you can see that the lining has like multi 
function. It is so it would be fitted to the body and it would provide a base for everything else. Like in those Edwardian dresses where it's super fluffy on the outside, it's accomplished in the same way. So the way that, that you can get that really fluffy look, but make it so it doesn't actually move around, is to have a fitted lining. The other thing that's really cool about this is that if you can see right here, she never actually even bothered sewing any kind of fasteners onto this at all. She used pins, and the straight pins are still in here. She's like, eh, good enough, looks nice on the outside. So she just pinned herself into it, and that's how she wore it. So I think we're a lot harder on ourselves than our ancestors were. They're like, oh, I didn't finish everything perfectly. Like, she got to this point and she's like, I'm done. I'm just going to use pins to close it, which is a very 18th century way to do things too, right? They used a lot of pins. Sounds <laughs> like me with garments. You know, I make so many skirts that are like these big bustle dresses and then I close the waist with a safety pin because I'm over it by that point. So if you're not used to seeing antique garments, they did really cool ways of finishing the seams inside. So this one has a scallop and you can see that it's like a double layer of fabric. So just like our original, when I was reading the description, it had you construct the whole back and then it had you construct the whole front and then you join them together on the side seam and it's the same here, except they didn't even bother hemming the bottom of theirs. So I would say with ours, you totally want to hem this because our fabrics are not as tightly woven as the Victorian counterparts. Now let me see if we can peek inside the sleeve here. Yeah, it's all enclosed. But up at the top right here, you can see that stiff stiffener. You see how stiff that is? That is the stuff that is making those sleeves so puffy. So it's some sort of, it looks almost like a high mo actually, like a hair canvas. And that's what makes the sleeves have their shape. Okay, is there anything else that you guys want to see before I sign off on this? Or you have any questions for me? Did you like this? Was this fun? I can do more of antique garments if you want to see, because I have quite a few. All right, well, I guess that... That's about it. If you guys have any questions or you want to follow up with anything, just let me know. Um, if you want to see more antique garments, just let me know. Here, Canvas of the Wind. I know, it does everything. It's amazing. All right, guys. Have a good day. I hope you all are hanging out. Let me see if I can turn this back around. All right, I hope everybody's doing really well. Know that you're all in my thoughts and my prayers. And we can all get through this together. And if you want me to do anything else... Oh, is there a belt? There is no belt! This one was like super loosey-goosey. So you can use a belt or you can not use a belt. What are my bangs doing? <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys have a great day. And I hope we can do another live sometime later. Bye!